I'll be discussing section 5, shares versus working sets. The idea behind this section is that in order to put forth this idea of server consolidation, that is, using this one physical server to serve the needs of a bunch of different VMs, we must implement a strategy that can guarantee performance to different clients. Traditional operating systems often use memory allocation to improve system-wide performance metrics. But this can be problematic because in a server such as the ESX server, we want to guarantee performance to certain clients based on certain priority metrics. Different VMs are clients of different needs. Sometimes we need to prioritize VMs because they are more important, or sometimes we'll just prioritize a VM because a service provider is paying more for that particular VM. ESX Server uses a new allocation algorithm that is based on the author's previous work. The algorithm is capable of achieving great memory allocation while it maintains memory performance isolation guarantees. That is, it will be able to allocate memory efficiently while taking into account the different needs of the VMs based on their priorities. In addition to the algorithm itself, there's this new explicit parameter that allows system administrators some control over the relative importance of the conflicting goals of whether to utilize memory mo more efficiently or to achieve more memory performance isolation guarantees. Proportional share frameworks have put forth the idea of shares to encapsulate resource rights. Basically, the idea of shares is similar to that used in an economic sense, where shares represent the relative ownership an entity has compared to some other entity. In this case, shares represent the relative resource rights that a VM has. Both randomized and deterministic algorithms have been proposed for proportional share allocation of space shared resources. Of particular importance is the min funding revocation algorithm that was put forth by the author. The basic idea is that a VM that is paying a low price is going to give up its pages to a VM that's paying a higher price when revocation time comes around. The problem with proportional share algorithms is that there's no additional information about whether memory is being actively used. So then clients that are paying more or rich clients could hoard the resources away from lower paying clients that are under intense memory pressure. The author solves this problem by introducing the idle memory tax. Basically what happens is that uh, clients are charged more when they're in possession of a bunch of idle pages. The end result is that when memory is scarce, pages are reclaimed from inactive clients. Here's the adjusted shares per page ratio, rho, used by the algorithm. Shares represented by S, pages by P, and there is an additional term uh, in the parentheses where these F and K variables, where F is a fraction of active pages and its measurement is discussed in the next slide, and tau is its tax rate, which provides explicit control of our desired policy for reclaiming idle memory. Basically, when tau is zero, a pure page shared isolation is defined. But when tau is one, or closer to one, idle memory is claimed more quickly from an idle client. In order to implement the idle memory tax, we need an efficient way to measure the fraction of memory in active use by each VM. One possibility of doing this is to get the information from each guest OS, but this could be problematic because each guest OS may be using different metrics. Additionally, an OS is typically making measurements on a per-process basis, which is not suitable for our purposes. So what the author does and is implemented in the ESX server is to use a statistical sampling approach. Using this approach, each VM is sampled independently for a predefined period of time. 
Then a uh, number, small number of pages n is kept track of, and another variable t, which consists of the page touch count or how many times each page or subset of pages is accessed is also recorded. Then the fraction of actively used pages is simply t over n. There are a number of averages that are calculated. There's a slow moving average, a fast moving average, and an additional version of the fast moving average that reflects rapid intraperiod changes. The server then uses the maximum of these three measures to um, estimate the fraction of memory actively being used. Because the max is used, the system will respond quickly when there increases in memory usage. But the system will respond more slowly when memory usage decreases. But this is actually a desirable behavior because when a VM starts to use a lot of memory, that VM is going to be quickly given its share-based allocation. Let's now discuss the experimental results of these two ideas, memory sampling and idle memory taxation. Once again, memory sampling is used to estimate the fraction of memory actively used by each VM. Once these estimates are calculated, they're used in the idle memory tax computations, which are integral to the shared-based memory allocation algorithm. In this figure, we see just how effective the active memory sampling technique is. Remember, this is the technique that uses statistics, as previously discussed, to compute three averages, slow, fast, and max. Here, each of those averages are shown in the graph in a plot of time versus memory. The experiment uses the ESX server running a dual processor, Dell Precision 420. The server is configured to run one VM running Windows 2000 Advanced Server on a 800 megahertz Pentium 3 CPU. The black line uh, begins by accessing just uh, zero megabytes. It represents the Toucher Windows application that initially is accessing zero megabytes, goes up to 250 megabytes, goes down, and then finally terminates and is accessing zero megabytes. If this were an actual good estimate, then all these lines, all the estimates, should pretty closely follow the black line. And indeed, that's what we see. Not only that, but we also see that as more memory accesses are made, the max line most, quick, most closely follows the black solid line, which is that desirable characteristic we discussed earlier. And as fewer and fewer memory accesses are made, the uh, slow line is more closely following the black line. One final note is that this CPT arrow is caused by the Windows Zero page thread, discussed more in the paper. This figure shows how effective the idle memory tax is. In the experiment, the ESX server is running on a Dell Precision 420 multiprocessor with two 800 megahertz Pentium 3 CPUs and 512 megabytes of RAM, 360 of which is available for executing two VMs. The first VM is running Windows 2000 Advanced Server and remains idle after it starts. It's VM1. It's allocated 256 megabytes of RAM, but it's not really using much of it. A second VM is using Red Hat Linux and is actually using a memory intensive dbench workload and is using a whole bunch more of its um, allocated memory. This is the case when tau or tax rate is 0% resulting in a pure share-based allocation. And thus, the amount that um, each VM has is roughly equal at 179 megabytes of RAM. But when the tax rate increases to 75, memory is claimed by the uh, Linux VM from the Windows VM, and the amount allocated to the Linux increases and the amount that it's using by the Linux machine also increases. This increases the amount of uh, performance um, of the Linux machine by about 